Hello, welcome once again to Adapt and Close, where you can find um, tips and tricks um, about the NCLEX exams. And this website is designed to help um, all nurses who are planning to take these exams, those who have taken it before, and our first day, uh, uh, test tickets. I'm giving you information that will help you the, uh, pass your exams. These are information that is usually highly tested. And today we'll be talking about diabetes insipidus uh, and uh, SI ADH. This is um, a topic you have to know because they like asking it and you see it mostly uh, in clinically. And so it's yeah, a easily testable question that can come in the form of content in SATA question, application question, priority question. So these two things you need to know under endocrine. So today I'm going to break it down quickly and for you and uh, make this topic very easy. Um, normally, um, yeah, like you said, I believe in um, pathophysiology. So normally this is what I think. Um, you have your hypothalamus sitting here like that. Okay. And then you have your, um, your pituitary gland sitting here like that. And then the hypothalamus has, has nerves here that goes all the way into the, the pituitary gland. Um, so this is the hypothalamus in the brain. And this is the pituitary. The pituitary gland is divided into two. You have the posterior pituitary gland. This is the posterior aspect of, of it. And this is the anterior pituitary gland. It's a very important structure that secretes certain hormones that regulate our body. The posterior pituitary gland secretes ADH and oxytocin. And that's the pitocin, and that is involving uh, contraction of the uterus, and then the um, the pituitary, the anterior pituitary. You have the ACTH that involved in cortisol. You have TH, TSH. Um, you have growth hormones, all other hormones that involve in regulation. Um, so that's um, you have uh, prolactin that involved in milk. Um, and then you have um, follicular stimulating hormones, all of them coming from um, the anterior pituitary. Um, one thing you have to know is the, the posterior pituitary gland, um, it doesn't actually doesn't secrete anything, the ADH and the oxytocin usually is made in the hypothalamus. Then it go down all the way down to the posterior pituitary and stored over there. So this stored the, and the hormones, the ADH and oxytocin. You see how long it has to travel to get to the posterior pituitary for storage such that when your body need it, it can be uh, and, and released. So therefore there is sometimes these areas can be injured. It can be injured um, either with trauma or with surgery or other thing, and that can affect the secretion of um, ADH. The main function of ADH, okay, when it's released, your body it, um, has to tell itself where it is, um, why ADH needs to be released. We have what we call osmo receptors. And based on the name osmo receptors, so there's receptors, something that can uh, attract some uh, chemicals. And an osmo is the osmolarity of the serum. So when the osmolarity of your blood, that means the blood uh, concentration is very high, the osmolarity, there's less fluid in it, these receptors, will detect it. As soon as they detect it, they tell the hypothalamus 
the osmo receptors there, the hypothalamus, to secrete, uh, stimulate the posterior pituitary to stimulate ADH. Then this ADH produced from the posterior pituitary goes to the kidney. It goes to the kidney and tell the kidney, I want you to absorb water. So it absorb water reabsorption. So that's the main function, free water reabsorption. So it help with water reabsorption so that it can dilute the concentrated serum when the serum osmolarity is high. So this water will cause the um, serum osmolarity to start going down. So it start to decrease to normal level. You want to keep it in something we call hemostasis. So it causes the water reabsorption will cause the osmolarity to start going down to the normal level. You don't want to overshoot to go down too much. So your body knows as soon as the serum osmolarity usually is 280 osmo. As soon as it starts getting to the normal level, your body, the osmo receptors will tell the hypothalamus, hey, I need you to stop telling the posterior pituitary to uh, uh, um, stop secreting ADH. So the hypothalamus, um, this osmolarity, normal osmolarity will go and then attack the hypothalamus in the literally, basically tell them, hey, stop doing that. Stop making, uh, telling the posterior pituitary to produce ADH. And therefore, ADH will stop and the serum osmo will become normal. This is what we call negative feedback effect. Negative feedback effect. So ADH secretion is under negative feedback effect. When your serum osmo goes up more than um, 280, the osmo receptors sees it, take the hypothalamus, I need you to tell the posterior pituitary to secrete um, ADH. ADH go to the kidney and tell the kidney, I want you to absorb water, free water. And the water dilute the osmolarity to bring it to normal, 280. As soon as you get there, uh, the, the normal osmolarity will give a negative feedback to the hypothalamus, and then the hypothalamus will stop secreting ADH to keep the body in something we call hemostasis. We, our body wants to remain in hemostasis no matter what. So this is what happened in normal um, sense. And if you understand this pathophysiology, you will be able to understand DI and SIDH. I think your exams is full of pathophysiology. If you understand pathophysiology, you will know the disease process. And out of that pathophysiology, you can answer content level that talks about the disease process. You can answer side effect about that disease process. You can answer education about that disease process. So the whole thing, every time you're trying to study, know the pathophysiology of that particular problem and you can branch it so that you don't memorize anything. And based on what we have, you can understand what happened when you have more than more, too much ADH. That doesn't respond to the feedback effect or you have less ADH. So that's what we're going to talk about um, in the next um, slide. So as I've already explained, in a, a DI, diabetes insipidus, basically there is no, no ADH. How can that happen? Well, there's certain things that can, I told you, the, I draw the diagram um, from the hypothalamus. You have the hypothalamus here, that there's a track here, and then you have the pituitary gland here, and the posterior pituitary. This whole track can be affected. 
things can affect it. And one of them that can affect it is head injury. If you have a head injury, it can affect the tract and then that will prevent secretion of ADH. The second one is when you have surgery. When you do surgery, surgery in the brain, any brain surgery can injure this tract and that can also um, um, affect secretion of ADH. Or if you remove the pituitary gland, pituitary gland, sometimes the pituitary gland can develop, there can be tumor in it, like adenoma. And then adenoma. And then when they remove it, you may have problem secreting ADH. In your exams, watch for something, they will, they will, they will trick you, they'll put trans, Transphenol, transphenoda, ipo, physectomy. Watch for this word. Transphenoda, ipo, physectomy. What it means is transphenol. The pituitary gland is behind, um, is in front of where the, uh, just near where your nose is. Um, if you uh, and where your nose, when you go inside your nose, there's a plate called cribriform plate, uh, and the pituitary gland sits right there, and therefore when they can remove your pituitary gland by going to your nose, so transphenol that going through the nose, through the cribriform plate, and then hypophysectomy that means removal of the pituitary. It's a fancy word. But all it means is transphenol or going through your nose, through the um, uh, cribriform plate. And hypo, hypophysectomy, hypo means physectomy, means removal of the um, uh, pituitary gland. And that can cause a, a diabetes insipidus because now you can secrete ADH. Um, this sometimes there can be medication. So example is lithium. Lithium can destroy the kidney. It can prevent ADH from doing its thing. So you may have ADH, but lithium will prevent the kidney from look, seeing the ADH to, uh, for the ADH to bind to its receptors and absorb the water that you need. And so if, a lithium can cause something we call ne nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. The top one, the head injury, the surgery, the transphenol, hypophysectomy, they leads to something we call neurogenic. So because it's involved with your brain, neurogenic diabetes insipidus. So we have two, we have neurogenic diabetes insipidus and nephrogenic diabetes insipidus. Nephrogenic is usually caused by lithium that affect the ADH from, and prevent ADH from uh, binding to the receptors so that it can absorb water. So these are the common uh, causes of um, DI. Now, what happens if you don't have DI? If you don't have ADH, like I told you, ADH go to the kidney and tell the kidney, do what? What does it tell the kidney to do? Reabsorb water, free water, just water, it absorbing water. Therefore, if you don't, it reabsorbs water and you so that we can retain water. If you don't have ADH, now this is what you have. This doesn't occur. So all your water that goes to the kidney, what happened? You lose those water. So you loss of free water. So you keep on peeing a lot. So what happened? You keep on peeing and peeing and peeing. So your urine 
will be mostly water. All you do is paint free water. Because there is no free water absorption. You keep on peeing a lot. If you if you can't absorb all your water, that means you may lose a, more than average uh, body weight of fluid. So put, your urine output should be greater than two liters a day. It can go up to like 20 liters. So don't be in surprise. So high urine output. And guess what? If all you pee is water, that means your urine will not going to look like normal color. So it will be clear urine and the concentration of that urine is going to be low. So you have urine specific gravity. That's what it means. Specific gravity is just the concentration. It's a fancy word. Concentration of urine specific gravity is low because what you're doing is just peeing free water. You're just peeing water just like that. So it, it, usually your urine is concentrated more than your uh, regular water because it's made up of a bunch of chemicals. If you can do that or, and all you're doing is peeing free water, um, your urine will look like regular water. So the specific gravity um, even my specific gravity is compared to regular water. So the re reason why urine specific gravity is usually high is because it compared to water as a baseline. And so um, it's higher than water. Now you pee water, you go back to wa normal water. So your specific gravity will go low. And then the normal level is 1.003 1.030. This is the normal level. So you expect the specific gravity to be less than 1.003. So that's why it's low. So you have to know these numbers. They may trick you in a select or apply. During specific gravity goes down. So if you, all you're doing is peeing, you, you peeing nonstop over two, three, four liters, you're going to be thirsty. Normally when you pee too much, you're going to be thirsty. So these people, um, they have polydipsia. They just want to drink. They keep on drinking because they're thirsty. They keep on peeing all the water they're drinking and they're getting thirsty, but they never get satisfied. That's why they continue to drink. So that's what it means polydipsia, which is the same as increased test. So what happened? If the, the, they pee a lot, so sometimes they trick you and they put this word polyuria. It's the same thing, peeing a lot based on your urine output. And as we already said, since all the peeing is uh, urinating is just free water, the urine specific gravity, which is low, if it's low, that means there's less chemicals in it. Therefore, you expect urine sodium. Sometimes they put this one there. So no, uh, urine, the sodium in the urine will also will be low. So the urine sodium will be low. Guess what? If all you're doing is getting rid of your water, getting rid of your water, getting rid of your water, well, what is the biggest complication of this? If you're losing two liters of water a day, um, it's not compatible with life. It's something needs to be done. You become hypovolemic. So you lose a lot of water, you can undergo, you can go into shock hypovolemic shock. This is one of the your priority. You want to prevent hypovolemia or dehydration. That's the priority of this DI patient. You want to prevent that. And this is how you can use your pathophysiology to answer this question. You see, I'm doing select or apply. They can give you all this 
Therefore, look, my, if you dehydrate it and you hypovolemic and you're losing all your water, guess what? Your blood will become thick, sticky. Your urine, your your your, your, your serum osmolarity, that is serum concentration will do what? Will go up because all you're doing, you're losing water. So it will be greater than 280. That is the normal. So the serum osmolarity will be high because all your blood will become sticky. There's no water in it. You've lose all your water. You expect almost electrolytes just to start going up. And one that they like is sodium. Serum, sodium. So the serum sodium will be very high. EMA will be greater than 145. It's going to go really high. So we have serum osmolarity going up, serum sodium go, what? Gro and going up. And then you see how you can you can put all of them to together. And so this is what happened to a patient that um get as a DI. Um they they lose free water over two liters up to 20 liters. The urine specific gravity goes down less than 1.003. They they very testy, they peeing a lot, the urine sodium we would because they pee in water will be very low. There's no chemicals in the concentration is very low. But then they become hypovolemic. This is the serious problem. You want to correct the hypovolemia or dehydration. So when the, somebody fluid status is down, their volume is down, you expect their blood to be sticky. The concentration of chemicals in the blood will be very thick. The blood osmolarity is going to go up. Serum, sodium, goes up. If they give you um, hematocrate, it's going to go up, okay? So the red RBC can also go up. So the most of the chemicals, electrolytes um, is going to go up because all, you, all you've done is lost your free water. So how do you treat this patient? Simple. Just give them what they lacking. And what is the main problem? Well, they need ADH. They need ADH to do his job. But sometimes we don't have ADH. We don't, usually we don't have specific NDH. So we have medication that does the same thing as ADH. And that is the name there's more pressing. So you give them the more pressing, which is a synthetic, is a synthesized form of your body ADH, the suppressing or desmopressin. Sometimes they put DDAVP. Don't get confused. It's the same thing. DDAVP, which is desmopressin. So you giving them something, the same ADH that they lacking, you're giving them back, um, and that will begin to do their job. Remember, this is for neurogenic diabetes insipidus. So this is from, it's a brain issue, not the nephrogenic. So this, the DD, AVP, or desmopressin will start doing the job of the ADH. So um, what do you do? After you're giving them an ADH, they absorb, now they absorb the, um, the, in the water. So um, they begin to absorb water uh, and then they will dilute the, um, the, 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 the sodium that is very high. There's another way too you can dilute it I mean, you let them drink water because they're losing it. Give them free water. And they, if they can't drink it, you can give it to them um, 
through IV and how you can give them the five of you. The five of you. Basically, it's just water, sugar water. So they can give them the five W and that will um, help them um, absorb the water that they need. So the treatment is desmopressin, free water, um, either orally or IV, which is D5W. And that will help with the, um, with the um, reabsorption of water. Remember, they can trick you, the AD and desmopressin, it come in IV form, it come in nasal form, and it come in aura form. So if they give you a question and somebody has sinusitis or has nasal problem and he's using nasal um, desmopressin and he has nasal problem, then they may not be able to absorb it. You may have to give them IV form or aura form. So this is the treatment um, for DI. The another question that they can ask you is, after somebody with DI, okay, I give them desmopressin. That means I give them the ADH that they need. What do you see? What do you expect to see? Well, I expect the ADH to, to do what it's supposed to do. They absorb free water and therefore their sodium, which is very high, will start to become normal. The serum osmolarity, which is high, will be in what? Normal. If they pee too much, so polyuria, this will become what? Normal. They will start decreasing how much they pee. They are urine specific gravity. What do you think will happen? Now I'm absorbing all the water now. It will be normal. Just be careful. Don't say it to go high. It will start to normalize. So all the things we talk about will normalize. And so that is the therapeutic effect of that medication. Um, and it, they, that's a, a, a quick way they can ask you a pharmacological question on this problem. You may, and they ask you therapeutic effect where I expect those things to normalize. So this is um, all you need to know about DI. I know I've covered a lot and I've put everything, all the testable things you need to know. And, and hopefully um, that may make things easier for you. Now, the opposite is true. We talk about um, the negative feedback of the ADH. When the serum osmolarity start to normalize, when your, um, what do they call it? E, um, when the serum osmolarity start normalized, there's a feedback loop to the pituitary to decrease secretion of uh, SID, uh, ADH. So what happened with SIDH? So SIDH means and, and sy and syndrome of inappropriate. So syndrome of inappropriate ADH, okay? That means something is causing the ADH not <laughs> to, to be secret more than necessary. There is no, we've lost the negative feedback loop to the secretion of the um, ADH. Therefore, all you do is secrete ADH. The common cause is also head injury. You can have head injury and the hypothalamus will lose its negative feedback and it continue like the pituitary will secrete a bunch of ADH. So head injury is a common risk factor. Sometimes tumor is also a common risk factor. I will talk about that. The other thing too is trauma. When you have head injury, which is the same as trauma, can do that. And then infection. If you have infection like pneumonia, sepsis, all of them can cause 
too much secretion of ADH, and that will lead to what we call syndrome of inappropriate um, um, ADH. The tumor, the most common tumor is in the lung. And it's usually small cell lung cancer. Small cell lung cancer, unfortunately, secretes ADH. And it secretes it a lot. And it's not under the influence of the negative feedback. So your body cannot shut it down. You keep on secreting ADH, secreting ADH nonstop. So we already talked about the pathophysiology. So if I have ADH, I go into the kidney. I tell the kidney what? Absorb, reabsorb free water. And what happened? If you start reabsorbing water, you have increased water retention, which is a problem. Your body will keep on absorbing water, absorbing water. Now you absorbing a, bunch, a lot of water. So you keep on absorbing water nonstop. So the water that you were losing in DI, non, in SIDH, you absorbing increased absorption of water. So what happened? Your serum, we become diluted. It's no more concentrated. So your serum or small will do what? Will decrease. It will be less than 280. So serum or small decreases. So your blood is uh, it's not sticky anymore. It's not thick. If the concentration is low, then I expect the serum sodium to be also low. I can expect the hematocrit to go down. The same thinking. I'm absorbing all my water and therefore there's nothing for me to pee. You can't urinate anymore. So decrease urine output. You can't pee. Maybe they, 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 you still make some urine. But what do you think? Your body, you're absorbing all the water. So you're taking all the water from the urine. Uh, the kidney will still do its work to uh, filter the blood, but all you'll be left with ADH is taking all the water out of the urine that is left. Therefore, the, the, the chemicals in the urine have, will have higher concentration. So your serum, sorry, the urine specific gravity will be high it will be greater than 1.030. So you have high uh, urine specific gravity, right? Because you, that's what you're doing. Um, sometimes they will put urine sodium. Well, if I'm absorbing all the water from urine, I'll be left with sodium and sodium concentration will be high. So urine sodium is high, very high compared to serum sodium, which is low. And what is the biggest problem with this problem? SIDH, well, if I have, all I do is absorb all water and then I retain fluid, then you become fluid overloaded. So you can see how the examiner can test your knowledge application question critical thinking, priority question. Like now the patient is fluid overloaded. You can think about anything that can happen. Um, anything that can happen. You can have long uh, problem, fluid overloaded. Um, you can go get pulmonary edema. You can have edema of the extremities. You can develop ascites. So there's too much fluid everywhere. It can go everywhere. I mean, you can have CHF. You can develop CHF symptoms. 
So you see how the examiner can um, basically can give you questions on um, select or apply. It's all, all of these symptoms, signs and symptoms is related to fluid overloaded. So you can get pulmonary edema, you can get edema of the extremities, you get sciatis, you get a CHF, or it's related for fluid uh, overloaded. But the major problem which your body doesn't like is the serum sodium, which is down. It can be less than 130. And this is what they like asking. Hyponatremia, your body doesn't like it. If there is low level of in this sodium, what happened? You go into seizure. And you can see how all these questions can be asked as a priority. And then you can use my B sharp technique, not expected. You have breathing problem, you have electrolyte problem, you are you may have hairway problem, and therefore and a neurological problem. You can go into seizure from the lethargic, uh, from the R. So therefore, um, hyponatremia is your priority. Is number one hyponatremia because they develop seizure. And so if they ask you somewhere with the SIDH, what should you worry about? Is fluid overloaded leading to hyponatremia? And those hyponatremia can cause a seizure and that will, neurological problem and that become a patient you have to see. Sodium less than 130. So treatment. Is easy. I have too much increased ADH. Well, I can stop the ADH from doing its thing, so I can block it. Fortunately, we have a medication that can block it. It's called demicycline. So this is a pharmacolo pharmacology question. You see, as the same name as. Yeah, we start with D, that's more pressing. So they can confuse you. With the, they will put these double D names over there. But this one is Demi, Demi Cycling. I will write it again, Demi Cycling for SIDH, okay? Um, and that will block the ADH um, and I, um, allow your body um, to um, a, prevent the ADH from reabsorbing too much water. So that's the medication you can use. There's another medication which um, it, it can antagonize the ADH, can also block it, another one that can block it. And there's a group of them, and I will write their last name, Vaptans. They are called Vaptans. Example is Cani Vaptan. So that's one of them. All you need to know is the last name. So they are Vaptans. Vaptans can also be used that will block ADH and it prevent it from binding to the kidney and therefore lack of reabsorption of the water. And then you can get rid of the water. Um, because you what what is happening? They are absorbing water and they are fluid overloaded. What do you think? You have too much fluid. Why well, don't take any more fluid, man? So we can restrict this patient, restrict free water intake, free water intake. So you can tell them to drink less than one liter of water a day. And because they have hyponatremia, their sodium is low, what do you think? Just give them salt. Let them eat some salt. Some salt. If you can buy some hamburger for them, maybe take them to Chick-fil-A um, and give them some salt or McDonald's. So salt tabs is okay. See, I always do select or apply because I want you to pay. I mean, it, 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 
so that you don't get worry about these questions and select and apply. It's, it's basically a pathophysiology of the problem and they just list them if you know the signs and symptoms or education and they put it there and that's all over there. So you give them salt tabs. They need sodium. Okay, we have fluids that contain sodium, but you cannot give them any fluid that um, is hypotonic. You cannot give them any fluid that is isotonic. So don't give them normal saline. Normal saline is isotonic. So you give them a lot of a fluid that has a lot of sodium and which is like 3% normal saline or 5% normal saline. It's very tricky. They can trick you there. They will put 0.9% normal saline. So you give them, because it has sodium, I mean, it, it's not effective. You want to give them some salt that is high. So 3%. So you need, they need hypertonic solution. So 3% and 5% is what we give them. Okay, and that will correct it. That will bring their sodium high. But this is the caveat. Their sodium may be like 120, 125, and you want to bring it down to 140. Well, this can take days. You want to uh, maybe three to four days to bring the sodium up. If you bring the sodium to 145 within a day, what will happen is their brain will swell. So brain swells. That's a bad disease. So you want to prevent that. So we'll prevent brain swelling. Um, there's a fancy name. I don't want to mention it. I don't think they didn't ask you about it. But central pontimalosis, basically that's what it is. It's a fancy name. Don't worry about it. Basically, brain swell, okay? Uh, CPM, that's the name. Uh, the brain will swell. So the key thing is never correct hyponatremia fast. So you, if they give you a patient, uh, which one you should intervene or you should question. When somebody has hyponatremia and the doctor corrects it very quickly, within a short time, you can question it. You want to correct it slowly as much as possible. So slow as much as possible. And so this is the treatment for SIDH. Um, and it's just briefly on the disease process. You can see how every time I try to teach, I give you in a certain form so that it can make it easy for you. And then all the set of questions will become easy. So that's the treatment um, for SIDH based on the pathophysiology. So we're going to do some few questions, application questions. Um, and before that, um, let me um, say that for nursing care, let me go back. For nursing care for all of this, you, you want to make sure that you weigh them, you check their uh, uh, I and O's because they're going to start peeing or stop peeing. And so you got to make sure you weigh them at the same time and checking uh, I and O, strict I and O so that you can correct the electrolyte appropriately. So um, we're going to do some few questions and apply it uh, for what we've studied. So you have a client So set a question, which of the following the nurse should expect, okay? A client with a head injury is diagnosed with SIDH. So like I told you with set a question, all you need to do is to get the keywords and make sure each answer choice satisfy those keywords. So you have SIDH, what do I expect? So what are the expected findings for SIDH? So urine specific gravity of what? 1.1001. This is less than 1.003, the normal level. 
Therefore, I expect the urine specific gravity to be what? Somebody um, who has a SIDH and he's absorbing mostly all the free water, I expect the urine specific gravity to be greater than 1.030. That's the upper level of normal. This is too low. It's really diluted. SIDH uh, will make the urine concentrated. So urine specific gravity will be high. Polydipsia, while well, they're retaining too much water, they're absorbing too much free water, I don't think they will like to drink. So that's wrong. Serum sodium of 146. Um, this look normal. It's a normal level of sodium. For SIDH, they have hyponatremia. So this is wrong. Dark urine. Yes, they're absorbing most of their free water. So the urine is concentrated. So dark urine. Serum osmolarity of 350. Serum osmo, the normal one is at least 280. 250 is too high. SIDH is absorbing a lot of free water, making their blood really diluted. So it's not going to be concentrated. So serum osmolarity is down. So this is wrong. Fluid retention. Yes, they are absorbing too much fluid. High uh, urine sodium. If you're absorbing too much water from the uh, urine, the urine you're going to have will have concentrated electrolytes. And therefore, the sodium will be high. And so you have number four, six, and seven are your answers. And this is how you can apply this um, information. The same thing, a SATA question. I like SATA question too, because I think if you know that, the test become easier. Uh, so SATA, a nurse should expect which of the following? A client with large pituitary tumor underwent, this is the word I was telling you, transphenoda hypophysectomy. They put this here, it's a fancy word, trans, true, phenoda, your nose, Hypophys, that means pituitary, that's another name for pituitary. Uh, Hypophysic, uh, uh, that's the name. And then sectomy, removal of the pituitary. So my pituitary gland is removed. That means I cannot have ADH anymore. That is what that fancy word is. Transphenol hypophysectomy, um, I'm removing ADH, a, a pituitary gland, so I don't have ADH. If I don't have ADH, I'll become what? DI, so this patient is a DI patient. So what do you expect? Urine output of five liters within 24 hours. Yes, they cannot absorb water because they don't have the uh, ADH. Serum, urine specific gravity of this. This is normal, 1.030. Your urine specific gravity is going to be really diluted. It should be less than 1.003. So this is wrong. Serum, sodium of 125. That is serum sodium. That is wrong. Sodium will going to go high. Treatment with desmopressin. Yes, they needing ADH. We give him the ADH or the Vaptans, so that's good. 3% so normal saline. What? Their sodium is already um, concentrated in, in the serum. You don't want to give them too much sodium anymore. So this is wrong. Fluid restriction. Well, it's a DI patient, okay? Um, they usually polydipsia, they drinking, they losing all the water, they dehydrated, they dying inside. They want it like, I need to drink some more water. So you cannot restrict their fluid. So that's wrong. So the answer is one and then four.
And I hope that is clear. Um, you can see how it all comes together easily. Same question. A nurse should anticipate which of the following prescription. That means which order or what would the doctor do? That's all. That's what it means. For a client with what? SIDH. The same thing. We just apply what we need. I have too much ADH. Well, um, tovaptan. That is another treatment for SIDH. Basically, a block. This is antagonistic to ADH. The last name, Vaptan, or Desmo press, uh, and uh, Desmocycline. Yeah. And therefore, um, um, hold on a second. Let me check something. Yeah. So, um, Sorry, well, we and the uh, tovaptan and then democycline are the two treatments for SIDH. Then fluid restriction. Well, if you have SIDH and they absorbing too much water, we need to restrict their fluid. Sorry restrict their fluid. This is that, this is that. Point nine, normal saline. I told you they are sodium, they are hyponatremic. You don't want to give them normal saline. You want to give them 3% and 5%. So this is wrong. Demo cycling. That's another medication that block ADH. And so you use it for SIDH. 5% normal saline. Yes, they are hyponatremic, but remember you replace this slowly. So that's good. Seizure precaution. The yeah, sodium can go down to 130. So this is a tricky one. The major complication for SIDH is seizure. Therefore, you should have a seizure a precaution. Monitor urine output. Of course, you need to check their weight. You need to monitor how much they take in in their urine output so that you know what is going on. Therefore, this is another treatment for that. And lastly, so which of the following shows therapeutic effects? A client with SIDH is prescribed demo demo cycling i told you this medication this is a question where you got to think about it it's an application question but it's a knowledge also question it is two things together first you have to know which medication this then you have to know sidh and then therapeutic effect this may be a passing level question there is a knowledge base you got to apply demo cycling block adh therefore ADH cannot do what it's supposed to do anymore. It cannot, in a SIDH patient, it, can, it will stop absorbing water so that the uh, lab value will become normal. The serum osmolarity of 250, this is still low. It's not therapeutic effect. We want to get it to like 280. Increase urine specific gravity. That means they're still absorbing water and therefore the urine is too concentrated. So that is wrong. Decrease urine output. This is SIDH. That means they're still absorbing a bunch of water and then uh, they, they can't pee anymore. And the urine is so concentrated. So that's not appropriate if I've given them democycline. Remember, you got to think twice. They have SIDH. I give them democycline. That means I'm, I'm correcting what is happening as at SIDH. So whatever answer choice you see that look like SIDH is the wrong one. And then serum sodium is 143. This is this has normalized. Yes, the sodium is usually less than 130. 
and now he has gone back to 140. So this is the right answer. This is the therapeutic question that you should pay attention to. And that is the right answer. So I hope um, this summary, um, I made everything clear for you. Um, and then these two topics is very important. And uh, if you know about it, and any SIDH, DI question is going to be e easy. And expect to get them in a knowledge form, pharmacology, uh, application form, and priority question. Um, keep charging and good luck in your exams.